Our own Dennis Dodd has some new reporting today. Full article on CBSSports.com as momentum rapidly grows for playoff expansion to eight, maybe even 12 teams. Now, this wouldn't be for this upcoming season. It probably wouldn't take place uh, for a couple more years, but they might be making some decisions on that sometime this summer, and it would drastically change things in the world of college football. So let's bring in Dennis Dodd here on CBS Sports HQ. Dennis, uh, what new are you hearing this week with regards to the expansion, uh, potentially a major expansion to the college football playoff? Yes, Chris, that this has gone faster than anybody anticipated. You know, in a April, there was a pre press release during the CFP meetings it buried within that in the 17th paragraph said, oh, this working group is working on a playoff expansion model that may be as big as 16 teams. That got everybody's attention. Well, in the next two months, things have progressed rapidly now where I think it's almost a certainty it's going to be eight, but it may be more. It may be as large as 12 because that would get every elephant under the tent, if you will, with the circus analogy. In other words, the SEC could have six of those 12 unless they put some sort of governor on it. And that's why they'd be in support of it. Uh, the main question now is access and timing. Who's going to be in? Will the group of five have an automatic berth? And then when does this start? Uh, as you mentioned, this won't start for at least 20 to, uh, till 2023. Bill Hancock said that uh, in April when this all rose up. But there is a meeting next week between the commissioners and then separately with the presidents who run this thing, there could be a recommendation as soon as June 22nd. I'm told the, the longest it could last, Chris, is into September. So I think by the start of the football season, we're going to know what it looks like, when it's going to start, and how many teams. So we definitely have two more years under the current format. There's still five years left on the ESPN college football playoff deal. but. I feel like both parties could end up making more money with expansion, so, so that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be that long before we expand. My question is, how are they going to decide between 8 and 12? If you're going to expand it, why not just blow the whole thing wide open and come closer to what they're doing at the FCS level? Well, there is a, there's concerns about safety if you expand at all. Um, there's concerns about the calendar. You know, what do you do if you go beyond 12 of a conference championship games? The way it stands now with eight, you'd have to start the season in the last weekend of August. That would still leave room for those conference championship games. I know a lot of people think, well, I'll just get rid of those. That's easier said than done. That's a large, that's a big chunk of money for these conferences. And that's why they're being played because they get that rights fees from the networks. And then with 12, you'd have to start playing games the next week to play in games for those 12. So that's about as long as it could go right now. Um, anything else, and you'd probably be playing later in January. But look, these presidents have gone back on their word, you know, all the time. They used to say in the BCS days, no more second semester of football. And then in 2019, we had the longest season ever in the 150 year history of the game, 143 days. So I wouldn't put anything behind these people, but it seems to be settling between 8 and 12 right now, Chris. Yeah, we've been uh, banging the drum. Uh, those of us, I'm, I'm saying we as in me. I, I, I've, I've wanted playoff expansion for a long time, dating all the way back to when we didn't even have a real college football national championship game. Keeps getting better in my mind. The, the, the argument against it is, well, it's just going to be Clemson and Alabama every other year anyway. But... Uh, what I'd like to know is, are, are there any conferences or programs that you're hearing who are against this major expansion? No, not right now. It's, it's just what each conference can get for itself. The group of five is adamant about saying, we need that guaranteed place at the table. The SEC, whatever the structure is, wants as many at-large teams as it can in there, as is the Big Ten. I think the Big Ten, since the BCS started, in 1998 has had the most teams in the system, whether it be BCS or New Year's Six with the CFP. So everybody's in it for themselves. Obviously, we haven't even talked about money. Obviously, that's a big driver of this. Right now, the average payout for the CFP is $475 million. But we're on the back end of that deal where they're typically backloaded. And I'm told right now by one industry source that the teams, the CFP, may be getting $700 million a year and I talked to two industry sources who said they wouldn't be surprised if a new deal would get be 2x or 3x, twice or three times 
as much as the current deal, which now stands at $7.2 billion. So if you want your, the answer to why, it starts with that number right there. One of the reasons it's taken so long to, to get to where we are now with, with four teams in a college football playoff is because there was so much pushback among the top bowls. If we go to eight or 12, how is that going to affect the bowl structure? Yeah, I don't have an answer for that. And that's something that has to be worked out. In other words, if you're the Rose Bowl and you've got that guaranteed slot on January 1st at 2 p.m. Pacific time, because that's what it is with the Pac-12 and Big 12, well, in a 12-team playoff, the six existing New Year's Six Bowls would just be rotating playoff games every year. Where is there room for the Pac-12 and Big 12 games? Do they just play a second game to have, have that game? And if they aren't in that rotation, what kind of teams are they getting? Now, the way it stands right now, the worst they can get is a runner-up in the Pac-12 and a runner-up in the Big 10. That could be a third or fourth best team from those leagues if it's a 12-team playoff and multiple teams get in from one or both of those conferences. So that's something they have to talk about. The contracts are a problem. All the major bowl contracts are synced up in line with the CFP, so they've got five years left to go too. That's gonna to be like turning an aircraft carrier around if you tear those things up and then redistribute the money for those things right now. I'm talking about the Sugar Bowl too that has the SEC and Big 12, same type of thing. So you've got time constraints, you've got money constraints, and you've got participation constraints with the bowls, and I don't have the answers for that just yet. Well, I, I don't know if you had the answers to my next question either, and that would be what happens to the regular season and the whole dynamic involved there. Uh, this day and age, I mean, you either have to run the table or, or lose one, maybe two games if you're in the SEC, but anything more than that and you're out. Obviously, a group of five teams are out with any kind of loss. Lower level conferences like a Pac-12 might be out with one loss. But if you, if, you, if you make it eight or 12, could you start to make the argument that you want to schedule a little bit tougher because a loss in the non-conference isn't going to kill you like it would under a, a four-team format? Chris, that's a great question, great thing to raise, and it has been addressed. I did a story maybe about 18 months ago where the likes of Florida, Georgia, and Texas, knowing this was going to happen in the future, had already upgraded their non-conference schedules. I had one person tell me that does scheduling that I, I can't remember the exact year, but it was like Florida in 2026 or 27 was playing the toughest schedule he had ever seen, non-conference plus the SEC. The point being that in an expanded playoff, you can afford to go 10 and two and get in as an at-large. So you get more money for those non-conference games. You don't have to worry about paying guarantee money. Now, is that for everybody? No, absolutely not. Teams in the MAC and the Sun Belt won't be doing that, obviously. They'll still be playing guarantee games, but there'll be less of them to go around because the big guys are going to be playing each other. And then that adds to the dialogue of is there going to be a power five breakaway? It will be you know more consolidation of their power the other point of this chris is that i was told by one source that with an expanded playoff it actually enhances the regular season he said that they become playoff fatigue same teams alabama clemson ohio state oklahoma getting in if you have more teams bidding for more spots that creates more interest he was especially frustrated at the you know who's in campaign by espn which he said kind of steals the thunder from the season especially in october and november if you have a nationwide discussion about a 12-team playoff in november that's going to spur a lot of interest there's no question about it i think the argument can be made that the regular season gets better uh quickly dennis yep. just one more for you put on your put on your nostradamus hat uh, tell us where we're going to be uh, come three years from now in college football? Well, three years from now, we're going to have an expanded playoff, but we may not have it implemented. You know, and it's going to, like I just said, we just went over the problems with implementing it, the bowls, um, getting this thing in place. It took two years to go from two to four. What does it take to go from four to eight or four to 12? Uh, there's a line of thinking they may just let this contract run out, you know, in five more years and take it to market. The CFP lets everybody in and sees how much money they can get for it. You know, it doesn't have to be just CSPN. Would Fox bid on it? What does streaming look like in five years? This thing could be blown out of the water. I said 2X or 3X. Who knows? It could be more. So I think in three years, we'll at least, we'll at least know when it's going to start, if not it having started already. But we will have an expanded playoff on the table in three Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, 
no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.